Welcome to The Green Room, a new podcast series by Sustainable Buildings Canada designed to help the building industry stay informed about the latest trends and techniques for building more sustainable buildings. I'm Jeff Fredericks, and I'm joined by Bettina Hoare, an indoor environmental quality expert and director of the Better Buildings Bootcamp, Kara Sloat, a senior mechanical engineer and sustainable buildings design expert, and Jay Lico, master's student in the building science program at Toronto Metropolitan University and a participant in last year's Better Buildings Bootcamp. Welcome, guys. Happy that you're here to join me. Okay, Bettina, let's start with you. Why don't you start by telling us who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Bettina Hoare. I'm a sustainable building advisor. Uh, I run a company called Sage Living, but I do a lot of work for Sustainable Buildings Canada. I'm their subject matter expert for indoor environment quality. And but most importantly, I uh, developed and run the Better Buildings Boot Camp. Great. Yeah. Okay. Kara, same question. Uh, I'm Kara Sloat. Uh, as you said, I'm a mechanical engineer with Hammerschlag and Joffe. So we're a mechanical and electrical design firm in the city, and we work on commercial and office buildings and multi-unit residential buildings and uh, essentially anything in the ICI industry. And so I design HVAC and plumbing for those buildings. Terrific. John. So I'm Jay Lico, um, non-traditional master's student in building science at Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly Ryerson. Um, and I was a participant at last year's boot camp. Great, great. So we're going to come back to that uh, experience that you had, Jay. And why don't we um, start by hearing a little bit more about how you guys got involved in Sustainable Buildings Canada. Um, and also, I'd like to hear what you think the role of the organization is. So we'll start with you, Bettina. Sure. Uh, I joined Sustainable Buildings Canada as a subject matter expert for indoor environmental quality when they uh, we're doing the Savings by Design program. And through that work, I uh, was invited to join the board. And it's a really exciting time because buildings are so important. How we design, operate, and continue to manage buildings is critical to our climate change uh, fight. And so Sustainable Buildings Canada is a niche national organization. And uh, we're really trying to make a difference in buildings are built. Yeah, terrific. Terrific. And Kara, same question for you. How, how did you get involved in the organization? And, and in your mind, what, what's the purpose of, 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 of SBC? Such a good question. Um, I have been involved since I was a participant in a workshop in 2014, and I had so much fun, and they had so much fun with me, I guess, that uh, they invited me back as a uh, mechanical subject matter expert. So I've done um, over 100 workshops with them with um, proponents who bring us buildings and we work together with all of their experts in the room to make those buildings better. This is one of the things I think that Sustainable Buildings Canada has really led in the industry and it's an important role, but they also um, help share information between experts outside of those workshops. I find myself constantly referring colleagues to their website for papers, white papers that they have financed independently that are just really needed in the industry to fill gaps in uh, the knowledge for practitioners as we're trying to hit our climate goals in decarbonizing buildings over the next 10 years. So if I could just add to that, uh, one of the other things that Sustainable Buildings Canada does, aside from the Savings by Design program and white papers, is the Green Building Festival, which is an amazing opportunity where they bring together experts from all over the world uh, it's held once a year. It's a fantastic conference this year, hopefully, again, live, as well as virtually. And, uh, yeah, the, the idea is to, to bring together knowledge so that, because the more we work together, they're huge proponents of integrated design process, which really prophesizes that the more we bring people together throughout the process of building building, that's how we get great buildings. Awesome. And Jay, what about you? How did you get involved in Sustainable Buildings Canada? And I know you participated in last year's uh, Better Buildings Boot Camp, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your involvement? So, yeah, last year I attended as a participant online. Um, as it was approaching again this year, I think I had written Patina back in about May and suggested some additions to the program. Um, and then, you know, that sort of step me forward into the news to, <laughs> to, to be a bit more of a player in it. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, let's talk about this year's uh, Better Buildings Boot Camp because, of course, it's 
fast approaching, and I guess we're just uh, just under a month away. Why don't um, I ask you, Bettina, uh, how how did it start, and uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this year's program. So, sure. yeah, first on the origins of the, of the program. So the origins are really simple. What happened was we would do these amazing workshops, professional workshops, where we had an actual building and experts from Sustainable Buildings Canada. We would all get together. We would crunch for a day and always come out with suggestions for making the building better. And I often invite, I mentor students, and I would often invite them to come and observe. And they would come out of those one-day conferences with their heads spinning, so grateful that they had learned so much, but also a little bit confused because it was too much in one day, despite their level, you know, often these were masters or PhD students, but often we're, when you're a student, you're immersed in your specialty area what you're studying, and then to suddenly see how it connects to everybody else and to an actual building, it's just a lot of vocabulary, a lot of mm -hmm. concepts, etc. And so I developed the boot camp to make up for that. So the boot camp on the Thursday has students observing a professional workshop, but we spend Monday through Wednesday preparing the students so that when they see the workshop, they're ready. They're ready to go. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, of course, uh, Carrie, you're a subject matter expert that's participated in the boot camp in the past. Um, from your perspective, how important is it that a boot camp like this exists to help, uh, you know, I guess inspire the next generation of professionals, right? Yeah, I think that being able to participate in a workshop like this gives um, students an opportunity to engage with a really interesting building right off the, the hop. I once interviewed an architect who told me that for the first two years after graduating, she has people design washrooms. And once you get really good at doing washrooms, you're allowed to do something else. <laughs> and being able to right away get your head into the game and think about a really big and compelling building like this year's, I think, the Center for the Performing Arts yeah. um, gives you an idea of what's possible in the design community and what kind of really high level thinking is required to integrate mechanical systems with building envelopes, with um, the pedestrian realm, with traffic, with noise, all of these elements that come together. Um, so the earlier you learn as a professional that all of those people are out there and how they contribute, the better of a collaborator you can be. And even if you're not in the buildings industry, understanding how the process works means that you can offer services to or help propel um, the green buildings movement forward through financing or um, advocacy, professional services, all of these, these kinds of uh, related uh, parts of making Canada's construction industry uh, more climate friendly. Great. Well, and Jay, you of course, uh, as a student, participated in this last year uh, virtually, but uh, it obviously inspired you to get involved. What was the big takeaway uh, from your perspective in terms of what you learned? It's a bit of drinking from a fire hose uh, because there are, it's multidisciplinary and everybody comes together to focus on that one particular project. Mm -hmm. And you see, you get exposed to professionals from all different realms, not just your own. And that causes you to start thinking about things in a different, from a different perspective which mm -hmm. you don't normally get when you're just head down studying your particular topic. Right, so that whole idea of, of different perspectives, um, which is, I guess, a core benefit of the integrated design process, right? Cross-disciplinary, different um, points of view on how to tackle a challenge. Um, for you, Jay, uh, that was something that was, was uh, inspiring, but also, I guess, got you thinking about all the possibilities uh, in the profession. Um, what is it that you, uh, what are, what's one of the biggest uh, takeaways in terms of the advantages of that type of approach, in your opinion? It's, it is definitely multifaceted. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're concerned about, you know, as a student going in, and this is the same thing that I'm doing every day, all day long, and is there any, going to be anything different? Ever, or is this where I'm stuck, sort of mm. to my test? Right. Um, it sort of opens your eyes to all these different possibilities. And, and um, yeah, I mean, just, just taking a particular project, taking a particular client's perspective and their, their goals, where they want to see this move to, 
how can we get things there? What are the different options to, by which to do that? And then, you know, you've got this whole other team of folks that are coming in, and they've all got their own priorities that they need to to meet as well for this same client. And how do you do this without stepping on each other or creatively, you know, coming together and making things, you know, taking it up a level from where where you might individually be to where the project can go when everybody comes together and, and works as a group. Great, and we're gonna talk about this year's program in a minute, but last year, um, the focus was on a U of T building, correct? Uh, Bettina, you wanna tell us a little bit about that project uh, and maybe even some of the feedback you heard from other students, but also the participants in terms of what the benefits were. One of the things we're really pleased about is the feedback that we get from the proponents of the actual buildings. So last year we worked with David Sasaki, who's the managing director of the, of the properties at the University of Toronto, and we worked specifically uh, on a data science building, and they actually used the student input from the team presentations. It informed their decisions on that project. So not only is it an opportunity for students to participate, but also for the team, the, the building proponent team, to get points of view that they might not have considered and uh, to take the feedback back to the professional team and, and use it. Great. Great, and um, I guess it's, it's probably a good opportunity then to talk about this year's program. Of course, we I think, Gary, you already mentioned, it's the St. Lawrence uh, Center of the Performing Arts, is that correct? And um, this is a rather um, iconic building, I suppose, in the sense that it's been around for a while. It's a, a core piece of the community. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the background on how this became uh, the subject for this year's Bootcamp. Sure. Every year we try to pick a building that uh, has some significance. Uh, this year is a little bit different in that uh, generally we take a building and we run it through the Savings by Design program, but this building's in the early stages, so it couldn't, which actually opened the door for us to do much more. So the St. Lawrence Centre is a civic building. It's, a civic, it's owned by the City of Toronto. Uh, the dream is to make it bigger and better. And because it's a city building, of course, it's going to have to meet the new, more stringent energy efficiency goals and what have you. But the team at TO Live, who's the city agency that manages it, they really want to go beyond. They want this building to be net positive in both in environmental terms, but also in human terms. So it's a, it's a huge pro project, and it's a huge opportunity for us to reimagine how the St. Lawrence Center for the Arts is not only a civic asset, but really a piece of the city that brings us all together and allows us to, to participate. Great, and Jay, I'm gonna ask you to sort of follow up on that notion. As a student, um, I know we're not looking at just having folks who focus in on buildings per se, we're looking to broaden the, uh, the appeal and, and, and the reach. So Jay, from your perspective, how important is it um, for the boot camp this year to, to look at other faculties, say the Faculty of, of Humanities, or, or to get more art students involved in participating? From, from the humanities perspective, uh, they bring to the table, from, from what I understand of it, uh, they would bring to the table sort of the placemaking. Where does this building fit within the civic stage uh, and the civic center? So you've got community building. From a performing arts perspective, these are the folks that are on stage and who better to relate the experience than those folks because that's what they do, you know, rather than why did this engineer put a column right here because these seats can't see. These are, these are the folks that can go, okay, here's what we need and here's what's, what's going to best suit our uh, practice. Um, where something like an architect and an engineer, they may be tangentially familiar with that and some folks may actually have a great deal of experience but that can't be said for the, the discipline as a whole. Right. So by bringing other people in, you're, you're making the project that much better. Well, that's really uh, important, particularly when you think about the role it plays in the community. A, a building like this um, it, it as an art center, uh, a place to celebrate a performance um, by inviting art students or the performers, as you suggested, uh, Jay, to contribute, to share their perspective of what ought to be considered in this building. Um, 
means a, means a lot, uh, I'm sure. And then, of course, there's the broader community and how they're going to interact with the building from a street level, right? Um, uh, is there anything to add just in terms of how important that consideration is for the boot camp this year that we're starting to really ask students to think more broadly than simply reducing the carbon footprint of the building, but more in terms of the impact that building will have on the community? The, the building should be a welcome space for literally anyone that comes to the City of Toronto, whether you live here or are visiting, we want the St. Lawrence Centre for the Arts to be a welcoming space for all people. So we understand that the arts sometimes can be seen as inaccessible in many, many senses of the word. And so the more people we have representing different communities, people with different abilities, people with different backgrounds, the more we will hear those voices, and this is the opportunity for students from any, any field of study with their own expertise to, to contribute, to, to have their voice heard on this project. And, and Kara, just in terms of how the integrated design process works, because if we're going to bring all these voices uh, to the table, um, almost sounds like that could be a bit chaotic to organize. <laughs> And I, I want to get your perspective as a subject matter expert on how the integrated design process actually works so that we don't have, you know, that we have ideas being shared, but we're not like bumping into each other as we're trying to come to some sort of uh, end goal. Such a great question. So um, Sustainable Buildings Canada has gotten really good at facilitation over the years. So half of the struggle is making sure you have a framework to capture the ideas and then to create different buckets for those ideas. So when we engage with mechanical systems, we dedicate some time and we have all of the ideas that we've shared about what we want out of the building and then we focus in on the specifics of how do we heat, how do we cool, how do we ventilate, are there performance requirements beyond that, how do we make those things carbon neutral. And we use the perspectives that we've shared when we're generating ideas to inform those things and we have everyone at the table to tell me when I'm kind of going down the wrong path. Um, so the stormwater experts and myself will talk about how we're using roof space, for example. Um, but we don't lose track of the ideas. Um, and as these kinds of projects proceed past this um, one week boot camp, the formalization of my plan out of that as a subject matter expert gets written down and we essentially write down the output. Um, we call those, uh, I'm going to pause here, uh, we call those owner's project requirements and then basis of design documents. So the, the commissioning field of all people have um, put a lot of effort into defining how to um, write down what you've heard from your client so that they can approve it before you wander off and design it. Um, that yeah, no, that, that's yeah. great. And I, I think, you know, part of what we're trying to do here is um, connect with students that may be watching this thinking, should I, you know, sign up for this boot camp? What am I actually going to get out of it? Um, and so, so Kara, maybe as a follow up, given that, you know, you're professional in the industry, uh, you, you know, you're probably asked often from young people, hey, how do I get started in this space <laughs> or what do I need to do? Uh, in order to get um, a career off the ground. Um, is, there, is there a message that you have for those folks on why they ought to stop what they're doing right now and go and register for this boot camp? <laughs> I mean, one of the things that's really hard about mechanical engineering was when I signed up in high school, I had no idea what it was or uh, what the career would look like. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to go to the University of Waterloo. I did eight co eight co -op terms. And um, it took me five to find something I actually liked doing. So this gives you an opportunity to see professionals in action doing 12 or 14 different roles and get a real feel for what their actual work is so that yeah. you can think, hey, I want to do that with my degree or vice versa. And this is sometimes more important. Oh, I didn't know that's what that was. I don't want to do that at all. Yeah. Well, and... Jay, maybe uh, as a follow-up question to you, just as it relates to, um, you know, that student mindset. Um, we were talking earlier off camera about, you know, idealism and and the notion that, you know, yeah, I want to change the world. I I believe in in climate change and, and fighting climate change. Uh, I want to go in and do my part. 
Uh, a boot camp like this, though, also gives you a sense of what's practical, right? I mean, I, you're hearing from professionals that tell you or can tell you these are some of the things that we realistically can 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 expect to accomplish. How important was that for you uh, last year in hearing some of those sort of firsthand uh, accounts on how, how things get done in the professional space? Oh, it's, it's always uh, interesting to hear, you know, what the professionals say, and then in the back of your mind you're thinking, well, what about this, what about this, what about this? And this is actually a great forum where you can actually raise your hand and say, why don't we consider this, or was this considered? How does this affect that? And then that could feed back to what you said, where the professional may come back and say, let me get back to you on that. I, I haven't considered that. And, you know, you proceed from there. So there, there are different, again, perspectives that you're, you're bringing in. And especially in the education, sometimes I think the way many new ideas are brought into these older professions is through the students because the students... The, the system, the education system is advancing and they teach each group of new students sort of current thinking up to the, up to the minute. This is, this is the, the direction things are headed in because we're doing, we're doing you know, hands-on research and, and various fields and so forth. And then that loops back into the professional practice where an intern comes in and says, okay, why are we doing this? We just read a paper that said don't do this. And now all of a sudden, you're, you're, that's starting to have a ripple effect up the chain to where now the, the principals are, are getting involved and saying, okay, maybe we need to, to rethink this process and, and you know, or, or approach it, excuse me, approach it slightly differently from uh, the way we had been doing it. Yeah, great. And I, I guess, Bettina, from your perspective, when you think back to some of the core objectives of the organization, Sustainable Buildings Canada, um, and Jay's comments, um, you know, it is important that we're connecting with that next generation and, and, and getting them exposure ultimately to the profession in a, in a way um, that that's different, right? I mean, this environment allows for, as, as Jay said, you can put up your hand, ask some questions in a sort of call it safe environment where, um, you know, uh, yeah, question the status quo, um, ask us a million questions, it's okay. Uh, that's what this forum's about, right? So can you elaborate a little bit about students and the, their, their importance for SBC? Sure, because there are a lot of forums. Students can go attend conferences, students can attend lectures, etc. Uh, but it's rare that students get the chance to work across disciplines. Generally, you're stuck in your field of study, and you're lucky if you can meet some people within your own institution who are, you know, in, in different fields, let alone other institutions. So we have many colleges and universities. Again, that's rare to have a crossover between students at colleges and universities, even though well, we all work together in the end. And so the boot camp really does provide a, an incredibly unique opportunity that's both interdisciplinary, cross disciplines, and cross institutional, lots of colleges and universities. Uh, across Canada, for, uh, this year fundamentally in, in Ontario, but we're hoping to expand the program. And then to have that mix with a real live project and with professionals from a variety of disciplines, it, it's a, it truly is a unique opportunity and uh, it's the reason Sustainable Buildings Canada has put this uh, program forward and continues to build on it is because it's the reality going forward and, and it's a great opportunity for all of us even you know those of us involved in it, we love being connected to the students. It keeps you young <laughs> and keeps you up to date. You know, these, it, it's all so important. Yeah. Well, let's plug the date. Let's plug how we get uh, students uh, to to sign up. So, of course, we'll promote that on on this podcast. But why don't you tell us again? Remind us the date of the of the boot camp. Yep, uh, August twenty second to twenty sixth, eight thirty a.m. to three p.m. virtually virtually and um, how does one go about registering so go on to the sbccanada.org website and there you'll find the boot camp click on it it leads you to the web page or the application page if you're ready to sign up and uh, we welcome all of you terrific well thanks guys so much um, this is our first show and we're excited to to have have done it um, 
we're going to, of course, have other episodes moving forward. Uh, we're looking forward to your ideas on what some of those episodes might be. So by all means, uh, share them with us uh, and look forward to seeing you at this year's boot camp.